Welcome to ThinkCast. I'm Casey Panetta, and today I'm joined by Lena Ramos, a director of advisory at Gartner, to talk about the Gartner Emerging Technology Roadmap. This is a really great piece of research that focuses on emerging technologies organizations need to focus on in the next 12 to 18 months. Today, we'll chat about Laner's favorite technology, the alarming trend that the research found, and how organizations can use this research as a tool for their own technology plans. Hi, Laner. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Casey. I love the podcast. I'm super happy to be here. We're always happy to have a fan on. Uh, <laughs> so I want to start with just kind of setting the groundwork for our conversation today. So can you tell me what is the Emerging Technology Roadmap? Sure. So it it is uh, basically a tool that we created, I believe, now about a decade ago. And we created this tool to help clients really navigate their technology planning. So the way that this works is that every year we, we run a survey and we ask a lot of organizations about their technology plans. And basically, we take all of this information and we summarize it into, into a single page view. So for all the IT leaders and people making technology decisions, it is a super helpful tool to benchmark against. So you can see what your peers are doing, not only in terms of what emerging technologies they, they're investing in, but also in which technologies they're perhaps less optimistic about or a, li- a little bit more skeptical about. So it's a, a really great benchmark tool that you can use for technology decisions. A few weeks ago, we had Brian Burke on talking about the emerging technologies hype cycle. So I do want to clarify, what is the difference between this roadmap and the hype cycle? Yeah, and by the way, I, I listened to that uh, recent episode, it, and it was great, Casey. So um, yeah, I'm definitely a fan, as, as you said. <laughs> so the hype cycle, yeah, and there are differences between the two. They work very well together, but they are different. So the hype cycle, you can think about, it's looking at the long-term horizon, right? Even at technologies that are two, five, 10 years uh, down the road, like you were asking, uh, Brian, for things around, uh, for instance, uh, digital humans and quantum computing and so forth. So that's long-term. The, the technology roadmap that we're talking about today is much shorter term. So we're focused on what organizations are planning to do in the next 12 to 18 months. So we, we don't cover those kinds of things, but we are most fo- mostly focused on where the investment we think is going to be in the next couple of years. So that's one of the big differences. The other one is where the data comes from. So for the roadmap, the data really doesn't come from Garner analysts, but it comes from the organizations that are implementing these technologies. So as I mentioned before, this makes the roadmap a very useful benchmark tool. Uh, so those are a couple of the differences, but what I would say is that they're very well linked and we put a lot of effort in aligning these tools. And the combination of all of these tools is very powerful as you're making technology decisions. This is a really cool piece of research, and it's also very visual. So I would encourage our listeners to pop into the show notes so they can kind of take a take a look at what we're going to be talking about today so you can envision it. But basically, it's divided into a couple of different categories. Can you talk about those? Yeah, so in the roadmap, we covered six categories. So we have three categories for core infrastructure, and those are compute, storage, and network. And then we have three additional ca- categories for IT automation, security, and digital workplace. So six categories in total. And as you can tell, this, this roadmap has quite a wide scope. And basically for each of these six, we are tracking then many individual technologies within each of those domains. And I know that each of those categories and the emerging technologies roadmap as a whole features a lot of different technologies. So how many are featured this year and how did you select each of them? Yeah, so this year we're, we're featuring 111 technologies. And, and to be honest with you, Casey, how do we select those is, is one of the most difficult things of, of this whole process. The way it works basically is that every year we look at our recently published research, including the hype cycles that we were talking about, in, including the, the last year's uh, technology roadmap, everything that we're hearing from clients as well. And we create a list that we then validate, or perhaps I should say that we strongly debate internally amongst the different Gartner analysts. And you know, it can take months. Actually, we are doing it uh, right now for next year. So it's a lengthy process, but at the end, it's worth it because we end up with a really good list of technologies to include in the survey that goes into, into all of our clients. So for those 111 technologies, what are you talking about for each of them? Yeah, so for each of those technologies, we basically ask three types of, of questions in the survey. So the first one is about value. 
So we ask clients how valuable they think each emerging technology is for them. Right? So that's the first one. The second one is around risk. So what is the level of risk of deploying each technology? And then finally, we also ask about deployment phase. So where are they with this technology? Are they just monitoring it? Do they have concrete plans? Do they have an ongoing pilot? Or are they even deploying this technology at, at this point? And so those are the three things. And again, we collect all of this data into an aggregated view that our clients can use to benchmark themselves against. If you'd like to learn more about the 111 technologies featured on this year's Emerging Technology Roadmap, or you'd like to download the version for midsize enterprises, please visit Garner.com or the show notes of this episode. Back to the podcast. So the other way that this research is divided is they do develop some trends and some insights. So can you tell us a little bit about the trends? Sure. And we, we have uh, quite a few trends that we detected this year, but I have a, a couple for you that I thought will in, be interesting to talk about here, KC. One of them, I'll say it's good news, and the other one is a bit of bad news. Uh, so uh, what do you prefer? Should we do the good news first? Let's start with the good news. It's 2021. I think we all need some good good news. That's right. That's right. All right. So for good news, what we've seen is really an acceleration in 2021 of technology investment. So we see a lot of investment going into emerging technology. And one of the best examples of this acceleration that I think is quite emblematic, it's edge computing. So the story for edge is that as a lot of organizations have moved to cloud, they have realized that having a very centralized cloud model is not always the best approach for some use cases. And for instance, so you might think about Cases where we have a lot of data coming from sensors that might be distributed in the field. And for those cases, you might need to make some real-time decisions based on that data. So it doesn't really make sense for you to send all the data back to a central cloud. So edge is really computing that is done near the location of the data. And that's been getting a lot of traction this year. If we look at 2020, most organizations were only piloting Edge back then, but this year they're now fully deploying Edge. So overall, it's a trend that has accelerated and is becoming very useful for a lot of organizations. Now, the um, the other trend in this case is, is the one with the bad news. Uh, this actually is not about technology itself, but it's about talent. Because uh, something that we've seen this year is that talent has now become the main risk for technology adoption. In the way that we know this, uh, as we were just uh, discussing, is that we ask clients about what is the main risk for each of the technologies. And it could be a number of things. It could be security risk, it could be vendor maturity, it could be talent in other categories as well. But this year, the risk of talent shortage really eclipses everything else. And just to give you an idea, about two thirds of the technologies that we look at this year have talent as the main risk of implementation. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is that we we all get very excited, right, about talking about new technologies. And I really very much can't count myself amongst the people that get excited. But, you know, this year we've, we've seen that it's really important to also think about the correspondent skills that we will need to implement these technologies. This is something that that we've seen this year with talent becoming really the bottleneck for technology adoption. It's actually really interesting because I feel like we talk a lot in our research about really cool technologies, but sometimes maybe not so much the talent that you need to support that technology. That's absolutely right. So I know you said you are super excited about the technologies, which is great because I think they're really fascinating. But do you have a favorite one or one that you think is the most interesting? Yeah, so (laughs) there are quite a few that are super interesting to me. But I'll say if I had to pick one, I'll go with zero trust network access. Because, you know, for a couple of years, the last couple of years really changed uh, the game when it comes to security and when it comes to networks. Uh, So if you think about it before, the way we did security was to set up our defenses really around a corporate perimeter, you can call it, to keep the bad actors out, right? So we had things like VPNs, firewalls, and, and so forth. And what we're seeing this year after you know, the response to the response to the pandemic after remote work is that that model starts breaking. So if you've been following the news, you've probably seen a real increase in cyber attacks this year because the surface area of attack is quite wide now. So zero trust uh, is very exciting to me because as the name implies, it's about not trusting any device by default. So almost by default, every device is potentially a bad actor. So independent of whether they made it through our VPNs and they're in our networks, we're going to be constantly authenticating. We're going to be looking for vulnerabilities. We're going to be testing those devices and so forth. And it's a super important shift in the way that we think about security and networks. It's funny that you should pick that one as 
the one that you think is the most interesting because two weeks after this podcast, uh, we're actually doing a podcast specifically on zero trust. So if you're interested in it, definitely tune in and, and give it a listen. We talked with some of our security analysts and do a deep dive into it. So I'm glad that you gave me that opportunity to plug the next episode. Absolutely. I want to pause briefly to tell you about another opportunity to learn more about the Emerging Technologies Roadmap in a Gartner webinar hosted by Laner, available for replay on Gartner.com or in the show notes of this episode. So one other question that I like to ask when we're talking about sort of trends and different technologies that are coming up is, what is the most controversial technology you found this year or trend? Right. Controversy. I love the question. So this year is um, not a very hard question to answer because since the results came out of a couple of months ago, the most controversial trend, I'll say by far, has been IT automation. And the reason for that is that this year we found that quite a few IT automation technologies actually took a step back in terms of their adoption. And the reason that this is controversial is because many of our clients, and I bet a lot of our listeners today, uh, see IT automation as a key part of their future. And, and that definitely is the case. So what, what happened here really was that during the pandemic, during 2020, the first year of the pandemic, people really invested heavily into IT automation. But this year in 2021, what we've seen is it's uh, different organizations becoming a little bit more selective when it comes to new automation technology. So they're focusing perhaps a little bit more on automation that can directly improve customer experience. So there's less focus on automation that's a little bit more internal, a little bit more towards the efficiency of, of running technology. And, you know, the controversy is good. Honestly, the, the, the reason that we do this emerging technology roadmaps is because often we find counterintuitive trends. Right, that, that we think that clients should be paying attention to. And IT automation was a big one this year. Yeah, I think those it's those counterintuitive trends that makes this super valuable to organizations. And I want to touch briefly on, you know, as Gartner analysts and as Gartner as a company, we like to do actionable insights. So how should organizations be using this? You know, they have the roadmap, they're looking at these 111 technologies. What is either step one or what's the most effective way for them to use this in their business? Yeah, so clients use this in a couple of ways, actually. And we we know this because we've been running this exercise for more than 10 years now. So the first is they use it to benchmark. So they use it to to benchmark their technology adoption plans. And for this, what, what you can do is that you can look at the whole of the roadmap with the 111 technologies, and that's very useful. Uh, in and of itself, or you can simply focus on a few categories or a few technologies that are perhaps interesting to you and then validate your perceptions around risk and value in those specific technologies or categories. So that's the first one you can benchmark with, with this tool. The second one is that it can be a really good input for planning. So we have clients that really use this as a starting point in their technology roadmap exercises as they're creating their own roadmaps. This is the first time we've really had an opportunity to dive into the Emerging Technology Roadmap on ThinkCast. And I'm really excited to share this with listeners. Do you have any final thoughts? Yes, I'll say that for final thoughts, the main message I think here is that when you're making technology decisions, when you're defining technology plans and in having to make decisions between you know where to allocate your, your investment, you don't need to start from scratch. So you can use this emerging technology roadmap tool that we've been talking about. You can use the the hype cycles from previous episodes and and all the resources that that we have to help you create and validate those technology plans. So that will be my my final thoughts. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Casey. Gartner ThinkCast is a production of Gartner. Gartner delivers actionable, objective insight to executives and their teams. Our expert guidance and tools enable faster, smarter decisions and stronger performance on an organization's most critical priorities. You can learn more at Gartner.com. All content in Gartner ThinkCast is owned by Gartner and cannot be repurposed or reproduced without Gartner's consent. Gartner is an impartial, independent analyst of business and technology. This content should not be construed as a Gartner endorsement of any enterprise's products or services. All content provided by other speakers is expressly the views of those speakers and organizations.